Good morning, grade 11. Welcome back. Our lesson for today is all about the current state of ICT. The current state of ICT. The modern world of information and communication technology is ever-changing thanks to the shifting landscape of new technology and the modification of the old ones. As a better understanding of computing methods are being incorporated into hardware that is used in developing more efficient software, the new trends in ICT are becoming more and more empowered. That's the focus of our topic here, the ICT relevant concepts and technologies that affect our daily life. Before we proceed to our main topic, let us first define the following terminologies. Internet. Internet is a global system of interco interconnected computer networks that uses the Internet Protocol Suite, or TCP IP, to communicate between networks and devices. World Wide Web. Commonly known as the web, is an information system where documents and other web resources are identified by uniform resource locator or URL, such as https example.com, which may be interlinked by hypertext and are accessible over the internet. Website is a collection of related web pages with a common domain name which can be accessed using a browser. Web page may contain multimedia files such as text, images, audio, video, clips, etc. Web 1 The internet has been a vital tool to our modern lives. That is why it is also important to make the best of the internet. When the World Wide Web was invented, most web pages were static. Static also known as flat page or stationary page in the sense that the page is as is and cannot be manipulated by the user. The content is also the same for all users. This is referred to as Web 1.0. Web 1.0 is the first generation. All Web 1.0 websites were based on hypertext Markup language or HTML slash HTM. This is an example of HTML code. These sites were static websites, which means they work on a read only principle. The visitor's function was to simply work as an observer or of what's already been saved in the server. This is an example of a Web 1.0 or an static website. Only the owner or administrator had the authorization to make any change. A Web 1.0 website was basically a single file saved in the server and displayed in its entirety when a visitor entered the address from their browser. The Uniform Resource Locator or the URL address remained unchanged regardless of the user's location. Only displayed text and images known as the readable phrase of the World Wide Web.
Web 2 is the evolution of Web 1.0 by, by adding dynamic web pages. The user is able to see a website differently than others. Example of Web 2.0 includes social networking sites. blogs, wikis, video sharing sites, hosted services, and web applications. Web 2.0 allows users to interact with a page. Instead of just reading a page, the user may be able to comment or create a user account. Web 2.0 also allows users to use web browsers instead of just using their operating system. Browsers can now be used for their user interface, application software, or web applications, and even for file storage. Most websites that we visit today are Web 2.0. Web 2.0, the generation that work on the participation principle. Example, YouTube, Facebook, etc. The user and the website work on a give and take relationship. It means while the website provided a set of information, the user could work on and add to it allowed for real-life interactive communication that paved the way for media sharing and online banking and shopping. Known as the writable phrase of the World Wide Web. The features of Web 2.0 The key features of Web 2.0 are the following. Number one is taxonomy, allows users to categorize and classify a range information using freely chosen keywords. Example, tagging. Popular social networking sites such as Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, etc. use tags that start with the pound sign. This is also referred to as hashtag. Rich user experience. Content is dynamic and is responsive to users' input. An example would be a website that shows local content. In the case of social networking sites, when logged on, your account is used to modify what you see in their website. Number three, user participation. The owner of the website is not the only one who is able to put content. Others are able to place the content of their own by means of comments, reviews, and evaluation. Some websites allow readers to comment on, a, on an article, participate in a pool, or review a, special, a specific product. Example, Amazon.com, Shopee, and Lazada, and other online store. Number four, long tail. Long tail, long tail is a service, are services that are offered on demand rather than on one time purchase. In certain cases, time-based pricing is better than file-size-based pricing or vice versa. This is synonymous to subscribing to a data plan that charges you for the amount of time you spend in the internet. 
or a data plan that charges you for the amount of bandwidth you use. Number five, uh, software as a service. Users will subscribe to a software only when needed rather than purchasing them. This is a cheaper option if you do not always need to use a software. For instance, Google Docs is a free web-based application that, also, that allows the user to create and edit word processing and spreadsheet documents online. When you need a software like a word processor, you can purchase it for a one-time huge amount and install it in your computer and it is yours forever. Software as a service allows you to rent a software for a minimal fee. And last, mass participation. Diverse information sharing through universal web access since most users can use the internet web 2.0's content is based on people from various culture. Web3 is named and referred to by web experts as semantic web or data-driven web content and response. Semantic web is a movement led by the World Wide Web Consortium, or W3Z. The W3Z standards encourages web developers to include the semantic content in their web pages. The term was coined by the inventor of the World Wide Web, Tim Berners-Lee. Lee also noted that the semantic web is a component of Web 3.0. The aim of Web 3.0 is to have machines or servers understand the user's preferences to be able to deliver web content specifically targeting the users. Web 3 is the current generation. All available information is based on real-time events. This is an example of a real-time event. For example, if a customer orders a package and they want to know when it is going to be delivered, they can subscribe to be notified. The back-end system generates a real-time event which is delivered to the customer when the package is ready to be delivered. In other words, what we monitor. Users stay connected to the live internet at all times. Allows for a platform that lets digital devices suggest probable actions based on your previous decisions. Known as the executable phrase of the internet. Example of it is Tidal Stream 4K. We experience the features of Web 3.0 Internet every day. For instance, consider the live stream features, feature of Facebook and YouTube. YouTube's video suggestions work on the same principle. Web 3.0 is yet to be fully realized because of the several problems. Number one, compatibility. HTML files and current web browsers could not support Web 3.0. Number two, security. The user security is also in question since the machine is saving his or her preferences. Number three, vastness. 
The World Wide Web already contains billions of web pages. Number four, vagueness. Certain words are imprecise. The words old and small would depend on the user. Number five, logic. Since machines use logic, there are certain limitations for a computer to be able to predict what the user is referring to at a given time. What are the major differences among Web 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0? It is the readable race of the World Wide Web with flat data. In Web 1.0, there is only a limited interaction between sites and the web servers, uh, web users. Web 1.0 is simply an information portal where users passively receive information without being given the opportunity to post reviews, comments, and Give feedback. Web 2, it is a writable phrase of the World Wide Web with interactive data. Unlike Web 1.0, Web 2.0 facilitates interaction between, between web users and sites. So it allows users to interact more freely with each other. Web 2 encourages participation, collaboration, and information sharing. Examples of Web 2.0 applications are YouTube, Wiki, Flickr, Facebook, and so on. In Web 3, it is the executable phrase of World Wide Web with the dynamic applications, interactive services, and machine-to-machine -machine interactions. Web3 is a semantic web, which refers to the future. In Web3, computers can interpret information like humans and intelligently generate and distribute useful content tailored to the needs of users. Example of Web 3.0 is TiVo, a digital video recording. Its recording program can search the web and read what it finds to you based on your preferences. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I hope you have learned a lot from this video lesson. And for our next lesson, please watch The Trends in ICT.